he's up here. I'm usually right here, oh, over this? the brain. Ooh, the otomy right now, his brain, brain is exposed. It's a little dry, which is not a good sign. I see. He probably has an aneurysm. Patrick Dempsey has, over the course of one year, become the sexiest neurosurgeon alive. The brain's pretty uh, resilient, uh, especially when it's plastic. How do you feel? <laughs> of course, he's an actor and not a doctor, and this is a Los Angeles soundstage and not a Seattle hospital. Is that a real heart? This is no. not a real heart. This is just a plastic, plastic heart. heart. But one thing is for real. What the hell happened? Gray's anatomy is a huge hit. You took advantage. I did not take advantage. And Patrick Dempsey, otherwise known as Dr. McDreamy, now has a fully resuscitated career. A lot of things are different. This is actually the second time around at stardom for Patrick. Remember the first? Oh, my God. Will you marry me? Not Sweet Home Alabama with Reese Witherspoon. That's just a few years ago. And that's way too easy. Try again. Well, I'm late. I got a bolt. That's it. Can't buy me love. If you don't remember it, that's because you weren't a teenager in 1987. I want to rent. Rent me? The film turned 21-year-old Patrick Dempsey into a teen heartthrob, and he has made nearly 40 films since. I don't want to be the love doctor of Beverly Hills. One of the running themes of his movies has been younger man, older woman. Oh, hey, I'm having a great time. As they say, life imitates art. You're worth every penny. At age 21, he married his 48-year-old manager, Rocky Parker. That troubled marriage lasted five years. And then he met Gillian Fink, a hairstylist and makeup artist who remembered Can't Buy Me Love and thought he was, well, dreamy, even if he did have problem hair. Many haircuts later, they were dating and now have been married seven years. They have a daughter, Tallulah. You too the great work. Now he is at the center of the biggest medical drama since ER. And much like what happened with George Clooney, this show is making Patrick a star. Well, isn't this cozy? Can I join in, or are you not into threesomes? His character, Dr. Derek Shepard, is caught in a love triangle between his wife and an intern, played by Ellen Pompeo. It's really only about the hair. You know that, right? <laughs> he has got good hair. He's got he does. Hair. We know. <laughs> Over 20 million people now have their eyes on Patrick Dempsey, and they aren't likely to forget him again anytime soon. I had a chance to talk to two of the young women you work with, Ellen Pompeo and Catherine Heigl, and they said that it's all about your hair. Pretty much. <laughs> Everybody teases me about it. I tease myself about it, yeah. They also said that you are very confident as a surgeon. Because I have my scrubs on. Uh, and then as soon as you take your scrubs off... And I'm you're completely human. insecure. And then I think you put the scrubs on, you put the jacket on, you have all the things to play with, and suddenly you look at yourself and you're like... Oh, I can do this. And, and with that, and with the success of the show, I think the confidence has come. Let's go back a bit. I want to talk about your childhood, because you've had a very colorful life. Mm -hmm. But you didn't have a very happy childhood. When you were a kid, right. they didn't know you were dyslexic. Right. And they put you in a class for slow and retarded children until you were like 12 years old. Yeah, it was, it was a while, yeah. Did you think you were stupid? Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Certainly. And then when you were 12 years old, they found out you were dyslexic? Right. How did all of that affect you today? I think it's made me who I am today. It's given me a perspective of, um, you have to keep working. I've never given up. You have to memorize a lot of lines very quickly. I think that's when I get the most insecure is because it's very hard for me to read it off the page. I need to memorize it in order to go on. So what do you do when you audition? And they say, here, I have to memorize read everything. You were very good at sports. Yes. You became a champion skier. Yes. Is it true that you're a juggler? Yes. Good. See those apples? Oh, God, you're going to make me juggle? I'm going to make you juggle. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, I started... Well, juggling... Juggling started everything. Would you rather have tennis balls? I have those two. No, juggling's all right. Okay, here we go. A little bit. Th juggling is basically a three-ball cascade, so you have three objects you cross over like this. And apples are very funny. And you just, that's, that's how it started. And I picked it up almost immediately in shop class because the power had gone down. <laughs> and, um, and then that started my career. And, wow, you know, and that's why I'm sitting here. So as I understand it, you're juggling away. There is a vaudeville troupe in Maine, where you're from. You join the troupe. It's like joining the circus, running away and joining the circus. More or less, pretty much, yes. You give up high school. Senior year, yeah. I left my, I left my senior year and just caught the bug. I really loved performing. I loved being in front of people. Patrick, when you were 21, 
as a result of the film Can't Buy Me Love. You were a teenage heartthrob, yet you married your manager. You were 21, she was 48, she had a son a year older than you. What was that marriage all about? Did you need a mother? Yeah, I think I needed a mother. You know, there were a lot of negative things that I'm still undoing from it, and we'll, uh, we'll always have to remember. Like but there were a lot of balancing things. There what, were a lot what of are the negative things? Understanding and controlling one's emotions in a proper way. And then after this period, when you're like, I don't know, 22, 23, the yeah. career starts to slide and goes yeah. down, down, down. Why? Well, I think because of that. I think because of... You know, you, you, in this business, you can't be difficult to work with. You can't have temper tantrums. You have to be professional. And I don't think I understood that at the time. What did you live on? I always worked. I was always a working actor. Did you go to movies at that time? I because hate going to movies. I don't even like going now. Why? Because I'm not in them. <laughs> and you I'm too upset Patrick, if I'm not. Patrick, if you're not in the movie, you won't go see it? Yeah. I, I, no, it's, it's too painful to go into movies that you've auditioned for and you don't get. Well... Good thing happened during this period, and that is that you went in one day mm. to get your hair cut. Mm. Tell me about that. And met my wife. Your wife. Yeah. Okay. I need a break. All right, take a break. Take a <clears> break and stop. Okay, you went in one day to get your hair cut, and there was this pretty lady. Gorgeous woman was there, and I, uh, I, I looked at her, and I knew I was going to marry her right away. Jillian Fink is her name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What makes a marriage successful? A give and take, mm -hmm. love and understanding, I think. You've also said that having a lot of sex makes a marriage successful. I got a little bit of grief from that. I probably shouldn't have well, you know, been as public about that. My mom was very upset and so was my wife. But I, I do think you need that intimacy. Why would your mother and your wife be upset if you said sex was important? Well, my mother's very conservative and she doesn't want me to fall into sort of, I think, the whole thing of using one's sexuality to promote yourself and to market yourself. And I think my wife is very extremely private and doesn't like it being shared. And, and, and that's something I, I'm sorry that I upset her about that. You uh, discussed in print uh, losing your virginity. Yeah. I, well, well, I don't have a problem talking about it. Well, you tell know. me about it. When did you lose your virginity? I was 17. It's not the kind of, I wouldn't just say, hello, how are you? Tell me about well, your virginity. Well, it's an amazing experience. Yeah. It's, a, it's a gateway into, uh, so to speak, into, into adulthood. Into, it changes your life. You know, it's, it's a, it, was, it, was a, it was a magical moment for me. You were 17. You were I was 17, yes. And it was on a lake in Maine. It was very romantic. It was perfect. It was a uh, great way for me to lose my virginity. And change, it changes you. It just does. Everything gets, you know, there are lights. There. It's very, it's very interesting. It only happens once. Yeah. You were a hot throb at the age of 21. You are a hot throb now again and at, what, 40? Yeah, I just turned 40. Yeah. I, I, I prefer this age. Much easier being a hot throb at this point. Well, I don't think you care as much. For people who haven't seen the show, you have a romantic relationship with one of the young interns. Yes. You also have a wife. Yes. Uh, who's a surgeon too. Mm hmm So just because we're sitting here, the two of us, and we're now so close, do you leave the wife for the intern, or do you break up with the intern for the wife? You can tell me. I would go probably, I don't know if I can, t I would probably go with Meredith, I think, now. Meredith, the intern? Yeah. I would go with her. His heart is with her. Well, so far, we're all rooting for Meredith the intern, if that helps. And I think Derek is too.